Back at it here in the city on Locks of the Week Radio. I'm Dave Medina at 741. And we now bring into the program the head men's basketball coach at USC entering in, into his second season. He's coming off of a nice win against the UCLA Bruins at Galen Center. He is Coach Kevin O'Neill joining us in the city. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you, Dave. How's it going, man? Doing all right, and I ma- imagine you must be really feeling pretty good after a nice, dominant defensive effort against the tr- against the Bruins. I mean, it's nothing like beating the Crosstown rivals, and this is now the third win in a row against Ben Howland's bunch. I mean, tell us what, what, what the keys were to the game. What made them get this victory? Well, you know what our guys did? They played really hard in the second half. We, uh, we started a little bit early in the game, but we really dug in in the second half, and Played well defensively, rebounded the ball. And, uh, you know, we got fortunate. We got some easy baskets off some turnovers, which put us in a position to have a chance to win the game. Yeah, definitely. And and, and other guys, and guys that really led the way, I think we know the names by now. Nikola Vucevic, I mean, he's been, he's had a couple of nice games of late. And, and, uh, you know, we even, we had contributions from everybody across the board. You know, it's really, it's really good to see that. And, and now you're entering Pac 10 play. Uh, tell us a little bit about the Pac-10 as you start your you start the road trip out to Oregon. Well, you know, obviously the Pac-10 is a lot better this year than it was last year. Um, we were picked anywhere from seventh to ten, so we're hoping to finish higher than that. We have played some really good teams so far. Obviously, Washington's the odds-on favorite. Uh, Arizona, UCLA, Washington State. Those four guys have been picked at the top of the league consistently. So, you know, we know we have our challenges ahead of us, but we're going we're gonna to give our best to, to try to get wins. Yeah, definitely so. And Washington having a, just an amazing scoring average per game, 88.9 points. To me, that seems like it just I, – I'm not used to seeing that as a scoring average for a college basketball team. Next highest is Arizona, <laughs> 77. I mean, what are they doing to get all these kind of – what are they – I mean, you played them recently in an overtime game. What do they do to get, the, to get their scoring chances? Well, we've held them to 55 in regulation. Mm-hmm. Um, to be honest with you, the reason they're scoring so much, they didn't play anybody that's any good in the preseason. So they, <laughs> they had three or four good games that they played some teams that were really bad, and they rang up big numbers. But they are very capable. They're very talented. You know, we played Texas and Kansas and uh, Tennessee and all those people, and you know they're, they're as talented as any group that, that we've seen. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't argue with that. Certainly not. Co- Co- Coach Kevin O'Neill joining us in the city. He of USC in his <laughs> second season. I'm Dave Medina, and you know it's it's a season with. I guess I, I say a season of opportunity. I know that there is a ban from postseason play a year ago due to the self-imposed sanctions by <clears throat> SC, and now you have a chance to really improve upon what which I thought it was a pretty good season overall. We know that you're, you're you emphasize defense. And, I, and we also know that you have three basic philosophies, basic rules for for when you coach for for players as they as they join your program. Be on time, give a great effort, and don't be a jerk. And I, I think that's a, a really good philosophy to set. Um, who who are the you know, you've taken a, you've taken on a a team of of all kinds of players throughout the season. Um, who do you think are your most improved players from a year ago? Uh, you know what. Fortunately, we have, uh, you know, Gio Fontaine got eligible after, you know, we had played 10 games, so that's helped us a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, our most improved guys, you, you got to look at, you know, our whole senior class. Alex is playing better, especially being the fact that he had a broken hand for a very long period of time and just got his cast off. And then, you know, Dante and Marcus have stepped up. And Nicholas made another jump. So the veteran players are as far as you're going to go anyway. Mm-hmm. So what we've got is guys that have played hard as vets and really done a good job for us. Well, that's 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 certainly a good thing. Good to see. Um, would you say that there's room for improvement? And if so, where would where what would you strive to improve on your team? Well, you know, we're, we're going to get better as Geo gets more integrated into the team, mm-hmm. and we're going to get better as our guys play together more and our freshmen get more experience. It's just a matter of time. Uh, I think every team can improve. For us, it was a matter of getting our guys back intact and healthy, Mm -hmm. and then hopefully we can move ahead. 
Yep, and moving ahead, uh, you will be doing. You know, it's 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 now you're getting into the meat of the schedule, and you know what? One one game that really stood out to me, I think, is coming up on the 20th against Stanford. I mentioned earlier in the podcast they are the they are the uh, they are another great defensive team. They have the least amount uh, least points allowed per game. Um, do you see that as a challenge? Is this something that you look forward to? I haven't even I haven't even thought about Stanford. Uh huh. We got to play Oregon and Oregon State first, so I haven't thought about them at all. I really haven't. Well, I think that's probably a good thing because you always want to take it one game at a time. No question about it. Um, now, um, tell us about some of the players that you have coming up against Oregon at uh, coming up against Oregon at Eugene. I mean, is there anybody that you might want a game plan around? Well, you know what, you know a lot of these guys started last year for their team and. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're good players. Jacob and Katron and these guys are guys that really played well against us last year mm-hmm. and really have a lot of experience. So, you know, despite what their record is, we know it's going to be a very, very tough game. Oh, I imagine that. I mean, I know that they're not having the best of times right now, but this is going to be the opening night for the new Matt, Matt Knight Center in <clears throat> Eugene. I mean, that it looks right. like a sparkling facility. I mean, I imagine you've seen some photos of it. Um, you know, it's, 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 it must be an honor to be able to be the first team to play a regular, regular season game at that new facility. Well, you know, it's, it's one of those things where I'm sure everybody there is going to be pretty excited about it. And, um, you know, it's, it's their first game also in the new arena, so they have to deal with that, you know, just like we do. But mm-hmm. it's one of those things where <clears throat> we know it's going to be a big crowd, you know, but we played at Kansas, we played at Tennessee, and we played good people, so... You know, we're uh, we're hoping our guys would be prepared for that. Yeah, that's certainly one thing you want to look for, you know, the atmosphere at Oregon. And speaking of atmosphere, I was wondering how you would compare the atmosphere, uh-huh. right, as you've been coaching in your, in your second season at Galen Center, to that what you had in Arizona at McHale, at McHale, excuse me, at McHale Court. Well, when our, um, that was the first, the other night we played UCLA, it was the first sellout I've been involved with. Mm-hmm. We've only had four in the history of the Galen Center. Wow. <clears throat> but the crowd the other night was every bit as good as any crowd I've seen in the McHale Center. Mm-hmm. And I coached there two different times as an assistant and a head coach. So when our people come out and fill the place and are into the game, where it's as tough a place as anywhere in the country. Well, you know, that's, that's, that's definitely good news. And, boy, you know, when there is a sellout in any arena here in Los Angeles, definitely a good scene. By the way, what do you think about Petrus Papadakis doing PA announcing? I mean, that must be something uh, unusual, isn't it? You know what? To be honest with you, I don't, uh, I don't ever hear any of the stuff that goes on during the game. Well, you know that. I'm, I'm sure he does. I'm sure, I'm sure he does it. I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't see the pregame video. I don't, I don't hear the announcers. Mm-hmm. You know, it's uh, so I. I guess I'm kind of eager to comment on that whole thing. Oh, that's fine. You know, and, and I think that's it's probably good to hear that because it shows that there's a real focus <clears throat> on what's going on on the court. By the way, Coach Kevin O'Neill joining us of USC I, on the podcast. I think I'm supposed to do that, right? Well, no, I mean, you're absolutely not, right. I mean, that, that's, that would be, certainly be that would certainly be the right, the right thing to do. And I, yeah. it's, so it's, a pro- <laughs> it's yeah. certainly a proper, proper protocol. You know, I, I, probably shouldn't be, I probably shouldn't be focused on the announcers or uh, – right. The security guards, or any—I I, I might want to go ahead and coach the team. <laughs> always, uh, you always what you want to look for here on the program. Dave in the city, locks of the week radio. Well, I just wanted to add uh, one last thing before I uh, before I leave with you today or tonight, and I just want to just uh, give you a moment to reflect on, on your on your tenure so far as a as coach of the Trojans. You know. What have you what what have you taken from your experiences coaching this team here in in the major metropolitan area and what do you look forward to in the future? Well, I'm very fortunate to coach at USC, which has great tradition as a university and an athletic department. It's a an unbelievable place in terms of you know what we do you know on and off the court. It's an excellent place. It's a place that's, that's you know really stress is excellent. Uh, so I feel privileged, you know, through all the ups and downs that we've had through this investigation and losing all these players and all that. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's a great place to coach, and LA is a great place to live. Yep. Well, I, we certainly hope that you can get to be a, a member of the Trojans for quite a long time, Coach. It's really great to have you on the program. I, thank you for joining us here on, on in the city, and we hope to have you back soon. Thanks so much. 
Thanks a lot.